Hello, I'm Pastor Sean Nider. Welcome to our sermon and prayer video for the sixth Sunday after Easter here at Zion Lutheran Church in Grand Coulee and Bethel Lutheran Church, Coulee City, Washington. Here's our bulletin cover for today. A reason for the hope that you have in you, 1 Peter 3.15. And um, that would be a theme for our, for our sermon today. Um, for, uh, we'll be reading 1 Peter 3, 13 to 22. Our first reading from Acts 17, verses 16 to 31, Paul in Athens, and John 14, continuing from last week, our reading last week, Jesus comforting the disciples. It's uh, in the upper room on Thursday, the night before he was betrayed, the night when he was betrayed, but... Um, we remember his words as he approaches uh, Ascension Day. Ascension Day is coming up this week on Thursday, 40 days after the Resurrection Day. So, um, and, uh, so we, we'll be focusing on that a little bit. So we'll start with the Easter hymn, the Day of Resurrection. And then, uh, dear Christians, one and all rejoice in old Lutheran hymn. And it uh, goes through the whole story of of salvation, a story of Jesus, and then an, and an ascension day hymn, a hymn of glory, let us sing. And the children's song for this week, I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, right? So, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray the colic for today. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. It's still Easter season. And uh, so he's risen. And because of that, we do not have to be afraid of anything. Uh, we hear Jesus again comforting his disciples in our gospel lesson today, John 14. And he is also speaking to us today. Do not be afraid. He is with you. And Jesus has sent the helper, the Holy Spirit, to live in you just as he promised. <coughs> One important reason that Jesus is telling the disciples not to be afraid is that uh, even though this is before the resurrection, he's still preparing them, comforting them, because he is going to depart to be with the Father. He's going to descend back to heaven so that he won't be with them in the same way. In the same way. Do you remember the first time you were alone? Uh, or maybe some other time in life where you felt very alone? Maybe the first time was when you were uh, very young. Maybe you were sent to the store on an errand, or the first time you walked to school, had to get there on your own <laughs> without getting lost. Maybe you, uh, maybe you got lost in the store, you were trying to find your parents. Um, even as an adult, we have times when we are alone. We lose a spouse, we lose our parents our brothers and sisters, our best friends. Uh, there are many times, even as adults, that we feel very alone. And it can be scary to be alone when there's no one to help, no one to watch our backs. The disciples are already afraid when Jesus is speaking these words because, as I said, it's the night when he's, he's about to be betrayed. The, the tension is thick. They know that the Jewish leaders are angry at Jesus and are seeking to kill him. They are still afraid, afraid even after the resurrection that those same leaders, uh, particularly the Sanhedrin, would wanted to silence them for knowing the truth and speaking the truth uh, about that Jesus is risen. And they were just simple, common men, alone against the world. And now and they didn't have their leader and friend to guide them. They also need to be encouraged because 
<laughs> they, are, they don't just have this truth to hold on to them for themselves. They are to go out and witness to the world, to give testimony for the hope that is in them, the hope of forgiveness and eternal life and resurrection to glory. Now, uh, now they can't be sure. They can be. Sure. They can be sure of this hope because Jesus is risen, which gives them and us an undeniable assurance that God keeps all His promises. Now, the good news. Uh, this is good news, but news that the world is oftentimes not happy to receive, as evident by the fact that every one of these men, except John, would give his life for witnessing to others about the gospel. And they knew this would be their future. And we see St. Paul living this out fearlessly in Athens, a thriving metropolitan city filled with religious and philosophical ideas of life, the origins of the world and eternity, um, but, but no idea about the true living God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit the Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier. These people have been separated from God and from the truth since the Tower of Babel and have developed many ideas of truth apart from God, trying to answer these questions of the universe. Paul confidently enters into the Areopagus. Even though he's been persecuted before, he's suffered before, uh, not just from the hands of the Jews, but even for also from pagans. He enters into what is essentially their university, where these ideas and philosophies are discussed. And Paul witnesses about Jesus, crucified, risen, and, and, and ascended, risen from the dead, so that all people will also rise to eternal life with him, all who believe in him. Paul was always ready to talk about the reason for the hope that was in him, the hope that drove him to travel, mostly on foot or by sailboat, across the Mediterranean, to tell people the good news. Now, we don't know as much about Peter, but he also traveled, especially to the city of Rome, to lead the church there, to witness about the resurrection and the good news of eternal life. These men were not afraid to witness to others, others who slandered them and reviled them, even for their good behavior, because sinful men do not want to hear about their sins. Even admitting they need to be saved is admitting their failure to be able to live a good life or, or to save themselves. It is hard for a sinful human nature to admit even this little bit. Many in the world will react violently when they are confronted with this truth, not only in, in Peter's day, in Paul's day, but in our own day also. And you know this. You know this. This is why you are not comfortable witnessing to others about the good news that you know. Hopefully, you don't fear for your lives, but you may fear for your reputation. You are afraid that you will lose friends if you become too much of a Bible banger, right? Uh, you are afraid that you won't be able to, uh, uh, you won't know what to say to someone, especially when you are challenged or when they ask difficult questions. But do not be afraid. Even you know, as though St. Peter tells us to always be prepared to give a defense for the hope that is within you, Jesus also said in another place not to worry about what you are to say, even if you are before a council or kings, that the Holy Spirit, the helper that God, Jesus has promised to send, will give you the words to speak. And this has happened to me at times. Without planning ahead of, of what I was going to say, the Holy Spirit in a moment gave me the words to speak that touched somebody's life. <laughs> There's especially a couple of times that I've seen their hearts and minds open up to believe in, in the good news for themselves. But at other times, maybe because the other person I was trying to speak to wasn't going to listen no matter what I said or how I said it, I, I didn't know what to say. But that is okay too, because if we have a relationship with someone, 
We can talk about things another time. <laughs> Lord willing, right? Uh, and people often need time to consider. You don't often get to see that moment when their hearts are open and they're and changed. But the words we say, the words that the Holy Spirit give us are like seeds thrown in the field that sometimes, you know, each seed takes its own time to sprout and grow. Uh, so it is good to, to study God's Word and to have some things ready to share with others. But it is also good to let the Holy Spirit work, you know, to give you the words. He knows better than we do. And sometimes it's even better not to say much at all. Our actions and our lives can be a witness without words. We, do we show our faith and love for God in our lives, not just by coming to church, but by keeping the commandments throughout the week? Do we show our love for others by our gentleness and respect in what we say and do? That is, is what Jesus means by keeping the commandments, right? A great summary, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. We are tempted uh, to fall in, uh, when, when we fall into temptation and sin, we can demonstrate our faith by confessing our sins to God and to those we have sinned against. Uh, tell your neighbor you're sorry for the times when you've not been gentle and respectful. Show them that in Christ there is forgiveness, so that when we fall down, we know that he lifts us up again. <clears throat> puts us back on our feet. We are not defined by our failures anymore, but by the love of Christ and the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. We witness to the hope for forgiveness and life, uh, that, it, that in, when we forgive each other. In, in a world that is getting more and more divided, less and less forgiveness, less and net less uh, love in the world, even by those who claim to be on the side of love, uh, in, in, uh, we, we can witness about this by the way that we live together as a church, even with those that we disagree with. It is, uh, keeping the commandments means both striving not to sin and to forgive and be forgiven when we do. So do not be afraid. Jesus is with you. The Holy Spirit is dwelling in you to help you to live and speak a fearless witness to the hope that is in you. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed and pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. I believe in God. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you again for joining me. I pray that uh, the Lord has blessed you by our time together. And it would be great to, to meet in person, in real life, someday. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.